Welcome to Cash Call. Listen live as expert sales trainers give actionable feedback on real calls while you learn coaching tips directly from the professionals. Cash Call back again. Dale Archdegan, Brian Curtis back for another week. Um, I, uh, yeah, my internet uh, on the desktop next to me is taking a crap. So um, I'm on my laptop. My, can you see my brand colors, Brian? I'm getting my office I do. office painted. And nice. Show, wait, I, it's not ready yet, but I'm going to preview for the people who are watching on the video. If you're if you're listening to the podcast, you aren't going to see this, but you'll see my logo nice. sign. There's the logo sign that's going to go up on the wall, uh, and it's a it's a, a gorgeous LED sign. It was only like 380 bucks, I think. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, very cool. Um, so LED's got very reasonably priced, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. So now it's like flexible LED. So basically anything that you could have done with neon before and even more, you can do it with flexible LED. It's pretty awesome. Yep. It is pretty amazing. I, you know, it's funny, um, before we digress too far, 2012, a friend of mine was working with a company out of Korea, and we were trying to figure out how to make LED yard signs that would rotate through stuff. It, oh, it never actually cool. panned out, but pretty great idea. You know, In what year? What year was this? 2012. Oh, I'm sure you could do it now. I'm sure we could. It's a great idea. If anyone wants to steal it, feel free. I'm not actively selling, so feel free to steal my idea. And you're here's, not, here, you, you don't want to get back to it. LED, you don't want to get back into the LED uh, listing sign game. No, well, I was in the LED business for a while, by the way, and uh, I, we sold all kinds of stuff, and then our supplier couldn't couldn't fill the orders, and that's how I got out of the business. But literally, we were selling to hospitals. We were selling to uh, I sold to a car dealership. Um, I sold to a guy who owned sixty Sonics. We were going to redo all his neon and LED. We had it all worked out. We had pricing, and then our manufacturer sucked and. I look bad, but such is life, you know. So that happens sometimes. Um, yep. All right, so I got a call. This is an interesting one. It's uh, it's an internet lead. The guy's an investor, but I want to, you know, we I talk a lot about building rapport, and we teach a lot about building rapport in my in my training company. And in fact, we even do a a we have a role play designed around just building rapport, where you you practice asking rapport based questions so that I can force people to break from the you know the straightforward sales discovery questions. But I want you to listen to this uh, rapport gone bad, and it's not a bad bad. It's like a Oops, kind of bad. So here we go. We'll get started. Hey, yeah, Lucian. Hey, Lucian. This is John Lester. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? Hey, pretty good, man. Just uh, saw you had uh, been browsing our website a couple of days ago, and uh, just giving you a call to see if you found what you're looking for. If you're just kind of window shopping. Which company or... is it? Oh, yeah. It looks like you were looking at a house on Claiborne, forty three hundred, I think, forty three hundred South Claiborne. Oh. Okay, so agent did great, right? He said who he was, where he was calling from, asked the question. He stuck the intro. This is a common thing that happens. The lead's like, who are you? Where are you calling from? He tells him where he's calling from. The lead recognizes it, but the agent doesn't wait. He gives the information that he has. So all of this is fantastic up to this yeah. point. Yeah, no, I got no gripes about anything. Yeah, he's doing a, doing a really good job. Well, I'm not, oh, shoot. I don't remember looking at a house in New Orleans. This, was it this week? Uh, it was a little over a week ago. Okay, okay, it could be. Yeah, uh, I'm just looking at some possible opportunities. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. Okay, so now listen, listen for the rapport, okay? This is fun. Um, uh, New Orleans is my hometown, but I live in Atlanta right now. Uh, man, so much so, of that, man. Everybody comes Everybody comes back, though, man. It drags you back in. No, I'm never, I've been gone since 1990, and I'm never coming back. Whoops. <laughs> so the agent's in New Orleans. The guy says his hometown is from New Orleans, but he's in Atlanta. Agent assumes, oh, you're coming back. So he wants to talk about coming back. That is the opposite of what this guy's thinking, right? Um, now, he goes on to build even more. I mean, clearly the agent's really good at, at rapport building, but, you know, we like to highlight these kind of things because it's like 
you picked you 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 know you had a you had a 50 50 shot you picked one of them so just don't pick one of them right That's i agree it. yeah yeah so hey, you know it, okay what, what brought you to atlanta or how long have you been in atlanta right or how long did you so you're from new orleans when did you move away those are all neutral questions right yeah how come you could even ask how come you left you know yeah yeah, what do you love about Atlanta? Is there anything you miss about New Orleans? Is no, I hate it. It's a shithole. Okay, great. No more. I miss the food. I think I, if there was something I probably would miss in New Orleans if I left, I probably miss the food. And then they can start talking about food. You know, it, really good opportunity there. You know, there's something. But to your point, and, and what I was going to say, I was just teaching a class on um, on objection handling, and I have six rules for objection handling, and number. Two, I can remember that. I know them all. I just don't have the order. <laughs> number, number two is never assume. And that's what this guy did. He made an assumption that, of course, New Orleans is an amazing place. Of course, everybody wants to move back here. No, I can tell you right now, you there, it would cost a lot of money to convince me to move to New Orleans. It's got humidity of like 9,000%. And, and it's a beautiful place. And the food's amazing, a lot of cool things. But it's just not for me. And and that's not listen, to dig on New Orleans, listen, but it's just listen not. To, listen to Brian backpedaling right now for, for our two listeners from uh, Louisiana. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but a uh, point taken, Brian, right? It's like, hey, if you're you know, you better be dead sure that you're right if you're going to pick a specific channel with somebody you don't know, right? If you're going to pick a, a definite path, uh, you want to be pretty certain because otherwise you talk, you know, if it had worked great, would have sounded great, guy would have been like, oh yeah, can't yeah. wait, to come back, whatever, right? But it didn't, it went the other direction and it can easily do that. And so, you know, I think that as salespeople, you learn that at a certain point where you're like, okay, right? I'm not going to tell you which political party or which religion I am most affiliated with. And nope. I'm not going to make any other assumptions in this conversation either. Right. Until I figure out which way you want to go. Yep. I can tell you right now, and I'm not going to mention which, how I felt about anybody. That's not the point of this, but I can tell you right now when I was showing houses in 2016 and we saw bumper stickers on cars, when I pulled up to the house, I had to do some work on myself many times before I opened my mouth to talk to the person I was about to talk to because I knew we were completely different people. Because there's a difference between someone who's a Republican and a Democrat and someone who's a Republican or Democrat and puts a sticker on their car. <laughs> stickers on their car, yeah. <laughs> the stickers the on their car takes it up to the next level. <laughs> yeah, you put the stickers on there and you are you 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 are inviting a conversation is I, I think what you're looking to do. Right. Yep. And so that just says to me, I don't even know that we the political parties exist. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Gotta go neutral. But um, so let's Canadian. talk about something. Yeah, yeah. Canada. Is that okay? Canadian, eh? <laughs> eh? Right. I grew up so in Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. Real quick, I want to ask you a question. Go. So even even all of our amazing listeners who are who are listening to that, and I'm going to include me and you. You know, I'm going to include me in this. You can choose to include yourself if you want. At some point in time in a conversation, again, I'm going to accidentally make an assumption. And so will probably the majority of our listeners, right? So here's my question. When you do, when I say, oh, so you're moving back to New Orleans because it's an amazing place. And the guy goes, no, I'm never moving back to New Orleans. What do you say? I've got an idea, but I'd love to just hear. What do you do to, to yeah. recover from that? Because we had good rapport prior to that, right? Really good rapport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm never moving back to New Orleans. Uh, one of two things. I would either change the topic away. You know, I would acknowledge and change the topic away completely. Or I would ask some sort of question that's in line with what the statement just was. So if the guy says, I'm never moving back to New Orleans. Oh, got it. So where are you planning on moving to, right? Just stay okay. in line with the question uh, and kind of avoid the topic entirely. Okay. I'm going to take a completely different tack and just and face it head on and say, I'll probably say, well, I, I completely misread that situation. My apologies. And then go into something else. Like, I'm just going to own it. It's like, man, I, well, I got that wrong. Sorry. Um, with that in mind, you know. Tell me, tell me about Atlanta, because obviously you like Atlanta, you know, or yeah, something like, like that. I like that approach. And I would I would use that approach if it were a scenario where I'm having a conversation with somebody and my my uh, my clear misreading of the way that they thought someone would interpret something, I would do that on a sensitive topic, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think I would definitely do that. For the one of like, oh, I'm not moving back there. I don't like it there. Or I prefer it here. 
I don't know that that's necessarily a sensitive topic, but let's say, sure. uh, let's say some, oh man, I don't even know how to, I don't know how to give an example that isn't, that isn't sort of like a kind of a taboo type of thing, right? Um, you, but everybody listening and you, Brian, I think you understand, like, when you're talking to somebody who perceives life or has expectations of situations or life in a certain way, and you totally misinterpret it, and they give you that look like, what, what, what's wrong with you? Like, why don't you agree with me kind of person? I think that's where I would apply that. If you're yeah. like, Ooh, okay, this person has a very specific way of interpreting the world or this situation, I'm going to do what Brian just said, which is call it out and pivot. Yeah. And when I say call it out, I'm doing a little self-deprecation there. People like when you self-deprecate, but I was completely misunderstood you there, you know? So, and then just something like that sometimes can really help and acknowledge the fact that you were wrong. I mean, you, cause this guy was completely 100% wrong. And, and I don't, again, I've done it. You've done it. Probably most of our listeners have done it. just Dale has a great approach. Just and again, to Dale's point, each approach is going to be a little bit different in different situations. But don't be afraid to just say, "Man, well, I screwed that up." Um, my apologies with that in mind. Let me see if let me see if I can do a little bit better here. And people will probably laugh at that. This guy seemed like he would have laughed at that. So, and again, I'm not saying yeah. this guy did wrong, but yeah, yeah, you should hear how the rest of this goes. No, it's good. Okay, all right. My my, uh, my family's still there. Mom, sister, all those folks, but. Yeah, New Orleans is not. Uh, I'm an IT guy, so you know I need to be somewhere in one of the IT hubs of the nation. Atlanta happens to be one of those. I was just about uh, to ask. You I'm not far though. I'm 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 not far. Six hours away, man, in a car and one hour by plane. There you go. All right. So you, so you you come visit family? Yeah, I try to come at least once a quarter. Nice. Man, that's that's a good bet. That's cool. All right. Bet and go fishing. Bet and go fishing. Where are you fish at? There you go. Uh, my brother has a camp in Venice. We go to, I, I, got, I got a couple of. All right. So this guy's great. At, the agent's great at building rapport, right? Yeah. He, he takes the opportunities. The guy said, go fishing. He didn't skip over it and keep asking business questions. He goes on his whole thing about fishing. Now, for my tastes, the fishing thing literally from a minute 46 uh, and again, continued on by this agent goes all the way to three minutes and 53 seconds about right a really long time uh, yeah so yeah it's literally two minutes of fishing talk when I, i'm not going to play i'm going to save the listeners we're not going to play the whole fishing conversation but uh if you'd listened to this call it's a little too much we can get back to business quicker so for this agent if you recognize your voice doing this i'd say you're really great at building rapport like Brian and I have said, cut down the assumptions because they can take you down a wrong alley um, more so than they will score you points by being right and cut down some of that lengthy rapport stuff. And, and yeah. I'll, I'll take you down to the three minute, 53 seconds, because that's the point. At, that's the first time we get the question of why are you looking to purchase here? Which is kind of far down there, right? I'll do that. I appreciate it. What uh, what are you looking at New Orleans? Just out of curiosity. There it is, right? So I think this question could have easily been advanced uh, a couple of minutes. You know what I mean in this conversation. And, and the, go ahead. And can I, let me ask you something real quick. So I don't have an issue with a two minute conversation about fishing. I don't. What I have an inf what I have an issue with is in a four minute conversation. Half of that conversation was about fishing. That's the issue yes. that I have, you know, maybe because honestly, sometimes we we ask somebody a question about something they're interested in and we just have to wait for them to shut up. They're going to tell us everything we never cared about and, uh, and we've got to do that. But that doesn't mean you skip your, the part that you need to do, which is the business part. The call just got two minutes longer. In my read. And, and I didn't play the two. Yes, it's too short. And, and half of it is just that stuff. Uh, the rapport stuff, which went farther than it needed to. If the if the lead wanted to talk two minutes about fishing, I'm cool with that. I didn't play. It. It's really like the lead was cool talking about it, but you could tell that the lead was the agent oh. was the one kind of driving that conversation for two minutes. Gotcha. Uh, right. 
You can yeah, hear and, that, and that's different because that's not building rapport. Like if I say, hey, Dale, where do you go fishing? And then you talk for two minutes. Hey, man, I do this. I like to catch this kind of fish, you know, and, and if they're really into it, okay, what kind of tackle do you use? What kind of bait do you use? Do you fly fish? Do you troll? Do you, I mean, you can ask those questions, but only if the, if the client is excited about it. If the, if the client's like, yeah, I fish at such and such place. Oh, cool. What kind of fish do you fish for? I fish for musky. Okay. You know, if you're getting those one word or limited answers back, then they don't want to talk about it anymore. You built rapport. You said you like to fish. They like to fish. They don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, and so what, what the answer to this question, it gets a little muddy, uh, but what he says is a, a for investment, right? And so um, let's hear how, how this gets closed out. It's not a very strong closing. Well, I'm just looking for some adjudicated properties that I can, uh, I know that there are some that I don't have to get into this tax lien thing. I just want to buy the property mm -hmm. outright. Mm -hmm. So for our listeners, I think what he means is like a foreclosure property. Uh, and tax liens. Tax liens, things like that. Yeah, you get a lot of those. Um, they don't happen nearly as much anymore, but the tax liens were very popular when people actually own their house outright. Right. Now there's no tax liens because the lender won't let you not the lender will pay the taxes if you don't. So it's not something that happens very often anymore. So anyway. Yeah. You know, I'm okay. Um so I'm not like, trying to get like into an investor kind of thing. Whole, what? Correct. The agent said an investor kind of thing. He said correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I work with some investors here, man. So yeah, let's definitely touch base. Uh I might be able to plug in with a few people. All right, cool. No problem. All right. Uh, Brian and I are like, wait a minute, why are we ending the conversation? We spent two minutes talking about fishing. You don't want to talk about buying property or investing in property or any of that kind of stuff? Yeah. So my my next question for him, since he has family from New Orleans, since he comes there once a quarter, he may not even consider this. I'm going to say, so would you be doing that as a long-term rental or are you consider an Airbnb where like when, since you come here once a quarter, you'd have a place to stay? He may not even thought about that. And you're like, holy, because now, does it make perfect sense to you and I? Is it something, that, of course, but just because, again, the assumptions, just because you and I think about that kind of stuff all the time does not mean even an investor is thinking about different solutions. So you could literally have said that and I go, crap, I never thought of that. That's right. I should buy a house in New Orleans. It's a win-win. It's a dual purpose, right? I mean, there's all kinds of advantages of having an Airbnb in a place that you go to often. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hear how he closes it out. So it's a it's a weak close. Hey, cool, Lucian. I appreciate it, man. Good good talking to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot you a text, and if you uh if you're in town next weekend, let me know, man. That'd be cool. All right, I certainly will. Yeah, my name is John. All right, John. I'm looking, waiting for your text now. All right, cool. Appreciate it, Lucian. All right, okay, man. So thanks a lot. Yeah, if you're in town next week, let me know. So uh, I just uh, I think we need to strengthen that closing a little bit. Are we going um, to drink beer? Is that what we're doing? Are we going fishing? <laughs> I'm not being a jerk, but seriously, for what? Uh, you know, because what I heard honestly was, and, and I know that they've neither of them's honest about it, but what I heard was, hey, if you're in town, we'll go grab a beer. That's that's what it felt like to me. Not, hey, if you're in town, we can get together, we can put together a plan to potentially, you know, look at some properties. I'll put together some numbers for you, see what works for you. I mean, none of that. So and, and I got a strange feeling, and you can correct me if you have feel that this guy, he did a good job. And then he kind of said, you know what, this guy is not a guy I want to work with. He's not going to be somebody's, he, it felt like he gave up on him, to be honest. Uh, I think that he, I don't know. I don't know which way this went, because I know that sometimes we give up on somebody and it sounds like that. And then sometimes we think it's such a home run. We feel so good about the conversation we just had that we forget to do the rest of our job and actually sell and book appointments and things like that. Okay. You know? Well, that's, that's better than my interpretation. I hope that's, I hope that's what happened. He gave up on him. Uh, somebody put in the chat. <laughs> yeah. EP said he gave BP. up on him. Yeah. So why don't you chat? Let's get opinions. Who think he, who thinks he gave up or who thinks he uh, thought he had a slam dunk and didn't need to keep selling or keep working. You can drop it in the chat while they do that. Uh, I have another call we can play Brian on the power of intros. Um, awesome. I love that. You know how I feel about it. May, Mary Beth said maybe he had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> he was already yeah, dialing the next up. lead. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so listen to this this mess. Hello. 
Hey, this is Marhum. Who? I was looking for Marhum. Yeah, so how do you get his name? Hit pause. You might as well hit. You might as well hit pause. Let, let's just start with the most obvious thing. Don't ask the person for their name because I want you to think. This is this is my frame for this. And if you haven't heard me say this before, if you heard me say it a million times, I'm going to say it again. None of my friends call me and say, "Is this Brian?" So the second somebody asks me, "Is this Brian?" "Is this Mr. Curtis?" "Is some version of..." That, that my wall goes up and I immediately go, how quickly can I get this human being off the phone without being too rude? A younger version of myself would have hung up. But since I'm in, and since I work in the telemarketing world, kind of I've tried to become nicer to other telemarketers, but but I'm still thinking, how can I possibly get off the phone as quickly as possible? And that makes it hard to build rapport. It makes it hard to do discovery. You're putting yourself behind the eight ball on the second word that comes out of your mouth. Do you want to hear another crazy reason? Please. Let's, let's, listen to it. let's listen to it and I'll play it for you. This is a new one on me, man. And, and I don't know how many years of selling. This is a new one. Okay, cool. She goes, he goes, where'd you get that name? Uh, I think he might've said that. Or he said, who is this? And she's introducing who she is. You had just registered on our website. You were looking at some real estate online. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I use this name, but it's not my name. Oh. Mahom means away. the night, <laughs> somebody who passed away, something like uh, somebody who passed away in his language, right? And that's oh. why he's like, Where'd you get this name? Yeah, because that's a weird you thing. Said, I, I, that's the first one I mean. <laughs> yeah, because he uses a fake name when he registers on, right? And it's something that means him. And so then you get this woman who is calling as a telemarketer. Basically, what we're saying, what Brian said is you sound like a telemarketer when you approach it in that way. Yep. And this is a new one on me. The dude literally uses a fake name. It means something else in his language. And he knows immediately that you are calling from some spam thing that he did. He's doing what Brian and I say, which is, hi, this is so, if I don't if I'm like, mm, I don't know about this name, I'm not going to use this name because it's some other language right and so i don't know name that she said is uh, male or female whether basam is male or female right i don't personally know that Me i don't either. feel super confident so i wouldn't use it i would just omit it hey uh, this is dale archdegan with amazing realty you registered on my website to look at home you know a couple of days ago here's my question just go in strong assumptive whoever answered that phone is the right person until they tell you they aren't and you can avoid that. Yeah, no, I like that a lot. And again, you know, it's funny because what would you do if you got some name that you knew was like, I still call the people who, um, you know, put their information is in as like, you're an idiot, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and, and uh, Bob, it, it, you're an idiot.com. Okay, great. Okay. I'm calling that guy. I'm, I'm calling that guy and go, Hey, it's Brian Curtis with Curtis Realty Group. You did that. Da, da, da. I don't care. Like yeah. we, we we had a big yeah good we deficits to people who were mickey mouse or donald duck all right talk for a yeah. second i gotta let your neck guy yeah that's okay um so it's an interesting story you said mickey mouse i've talked to people who have closed mickey mouse and what i mean by that is literally obviously the person wasn't mickey mouse but they literally signed in as mickey mouse and they called them and talked to them and they 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 closed them. Now, obviously, they had to learn their name. They had to figure out who they were. So over time, that, that did work out pretty well. But here's the thing, actually, I, I want you guys to consider, and I'm getting, I want Dale's opinion on this. So um, the mastermind that I'm part of right before this call, someone was talking about uh, video text. And they said, when I send a video text, should I use the person's name or should I just do it generic? I suggested that you always use the person's name if you have the time to record record that video text. In other words, hold the phone in front of your face. Hey, this, hey, Bob, this is Brian Curtis, Curtis Realty Group, some version of that. The person in our mastermind said, well, what if they got their name wrong? Wouldn't it be better to not use their name? So I, I would just love to hear your opinion. I've got mine, but I'd love to hear your opinion on that, Dale, because video text is a huge communication medium right now. Yeah. If I can't read the name or can't pronounce the name uh, or aren't, I'm not confident with it, I would just omit the name. Right. Okay. What if it's Bob? If it's Bob, I would use the name. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, Bob. 
blah, blah, blah. Now, right. now I'm going to take the person who gave me the objection, if you will. But what if Bob used a, fault, a fake name? My answer oh. was, I don't care. That's on Bob. I don't care. And, and you know, and, and I followed it up with this. I used to have a lot of email autoresponders that used merge fields. So people would you know, average, you know, fill out their form as F U and they wouldn't use F and U. And so I'd send them a tech, I'd send them an email. Hey, F U, you know, (laughs) it is what it is. And it didn't hurt my business. It didn't sue. So here's my point. The more often you can use people's name, the better, assuming that you're not going to butcher it. So one of uh, my best friends in the air force, his name was Obiasili Aniakudo. Okay. Wow. I would not try to pronounce that name. I mean, I will now because we're friends and I know him and all that kind of, but there's no just, way. And you just pronounced it on a podcast. So you got it. You, you, you nailed it. Good job. Right. I mean, it, it guy's been a friend of mine for 20 years. So I know how to pronounce his name. The very first time I saw his name, I was like, what the hell is that? I wouldn't have tried to do that on the phone because. Did you call him, um, you call him Bob when you first met him? Were you like, can I, can I just call you Bob? Or? Actually, I it was a different, it was a social situation. So I took a stab at it and I got it pretty close. <laughs> so, but anyway, but my point is today, if I got that person as a lead, there was no way I would go, hey, Obi Asili, this is Brian. Because he'd be like, what? And by the way, no one calls him that because no one can pronounce it. So you know, he goes by a different name. So anyway, my point is, if it's a atrocious name that when I say atrocious, it's a name that you're going to make atrocious, not the name is atrocious. Skip it. But otherwise, use the person's name. It's one of the things that people identify with the most, right? Absolutely. Uh, all right, everybody. Got to wrap up today. Thanks for joining myself on Cash Call. And we'll see all of you guys again next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to Cash Call today. If you like what you heard, come check us out at smartsalescoaching.com and we'll be back again next week.